Tech giants Facebook and Twitter are censoring journalism critical of Joe Biden and making it impossible for you to learn about developments in the US election. Facebook has become the most egregious of these tech giants. Hiding behind third-party fact-checkers, it has promised are independent and entirely non-partisan. These fact-checkers have extraordinary powers to censor news stories they disagree with, demonetize news organisations and even ban news outlets entirely. They are granted these powers on the provision that they are balanced in their judgments and that they do not have agendas and, most importantly, that they don't campaign for or against one side of politics. Well, Sky News Australia has launched an investigation into these fact-checkers and what we have uncovered is disturbing evidence of political bias and a lack of accountability at the top levels of the certification process. In the most extreme example we have uncovered, an outspoken Twitter activist critical of Donald Trump, who brags about being on Team Hillary Clinton, has become the independent expert in charge of who becomes a fact-checker. But first, to understand how the flow of information became so corrupted, to the point where faceless activists from other countries are threatening to ban voices they disagree with, well, we have to go back to the 2016 US election. The race Democrats thought was in the bag. After Democrats lost the 2016 election, a movement against conservative opinions began gaining momentum as progressives opted to lay the blame of their devastating election loss at the feet of misinformation on Facebook. Rather than looking at their own failed political strategies or policies, progressives opted to blame without evidence that the election was stolen through Russian misinformation spread on Facebook. Without evidence for their claims, they alleged President Donald Trump greenlit the entire operation. But they sold about $100,000 of advertisements to what they call inauthentic accounts operated out of Russia during the campaign. Uh, Facebook says uh, they've shared this inf information with investigators. Are you concerned that these ads may have deliberately targeted voters in some of those key swing states? Well, this is just one platform. Uh, we need to find out what is the evidence with respect to other social media platforms like Twitter, for example. There is significant evidence of collusion. There is ample evidence, and indeed there is. Uh, of collusion of people in the Trump campaign with the Russians. I think there's plenty of evidence of collusion or conspiracy. The evidence suggests, indeed, Trump is, has been, a pawn of the Russians. But when you start to see a pattern uh, where he basically spouts Putin's lies, then we have to ask the most unusual and a frightening question about our own president. Why this president seems to be putting Russia's interests ahead of our own. Well, Christy, the president's tweet trying to make the case that he's not a Russian asset really just undercuts his own defense. The president's tweet couldn't have been scripted better if it was written by Putin himself. This is nothing short of treasonous because it is a betrayal of the nation. He is giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Is there influence, whether witting or unwitting, by the, by the Russians over uh, President Trump? The possibility, the very real possibility, that President Putin holds damaging information over President Trump. Now, some more tech-savvy progressives saw this hoax as an opportunity to gain a paycheck from Facebook under the guise of fact-checking misinformation. Of course, these fact-checkers never probe conspiracy theories such as the Russia collusion hoax. No, instead they aggressively target conservatives and have on several occasions threatened this news organisation and ordered we amend headlines to appease their opinions. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg drew criticism from these progressives shortly after the election for rejecting their premise. Personally, I think the idea of fake news on Facebook, which is a very small amount of the content, influenced the election anyway, I think is a pretty crazy idea. Voters make decisions based on their lived experiences, he said. I do think there is a certain profound lack of empathy in asserting that the only reason someone could have voted the way they did is that they saw fake news, Mark Zuckerberg said. He went on to say, if you believe that, then I don't think you have internalised the message the Trump supporters are trying to send in this election. But eventually, cracks appeared in Zuckerberg's rhetoric, and he caved into those who would eventually become the fact-checkers, today's controllers of information. Enter the International Fact-Checking Network, a coalition of progressive, self-proclaimed fact-checkers who wrote an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg shortly after his comments were published. 
we believe that Facebook should start an open conversation on the principles that could underpin a more accurate news ecosystem on its news feed. The global fact-checking community is eager to take part in this conversation. Well, I imagine they would be quite eager. These fact-checkers are being paid for the task of censoring content and policing the vast depths of Facebook is a giant task indeed. Facebook won't publicly reveal how much the fact-checkers are paid, but you could imagine it would be substantial given how important the company now places their efforts on misinformation. The international fact-checking organisation also managed to monopolise this newly blossoming industry. Facebook has promised to only use the fact-checkers certified by the group, the International Fact-Checking Organisation. Now, this is quite a responsibility. You would hope that members of this body are above reproach. Tragically, for the free exchange of ideas, Sky News can reveal that one of the most prolific fact-checking certifiers is an outspoken Twitter activist who politically barracks for Hillary Clinton and even appears on propaganda network Russia Today to attack Donald Trump. Meet American University School of Communication professor Margot Suska, the certifier who was granted 19 fact-checking licenses or reviews to organisations wanting to police your content. Some of the bodies she has approved or audited include the Associated Press, Check Your Fact, Decryptors, Lead Stories, MediaWise and The Dispatch. Ms Suska has tweeted that it would be a, quote, dereliction of duty to even broadcast speeches of Donald Trump. And in 2019, Ms Suska posted a happy snap with failed presidential candidate Hillary Clinton, where she admitted, I've been on Team Hillary since 2008, to be honest. And then she said she was disappointed that Hillary Clinton's likability did not resonate with the public in the 2016 election. She went on to say, my boyfriend was her nuclear policy fellow for a year when she was in the Senate. He says that she's the smartest, most likeable person. It just never came through, I guess. So sad. Ms. Suska also retweeted content that said, quote, a projected Joe Biden win won't erase the racism shown by Donald Trump and embraced by nearly half the country's electorate. Half the country? A racist? That doesn't seem very objective to me. In one of her several appearances on Russia Today, Ms. Suska admits that she cannot be objective about Donald Trump. It's hard for me to be an objective, ob objective observer of this uh, presidential administration when for years now they have continuously uh, tried to delegitimize and marginalize news reporters for doing their constitutionally protected job. However, despite her public political activism, Ms. Suska holds a key position with the International Fact-Checking Network, which allows her to grant fact-checking licenses and even audit decisions. In one recent audit of Facebook fact-checker lead stories, Ms. Suska said in her opinion the website was objective and fair when fact-checking. I have no concerns about its sources, topic selection or methodology, nor do I have any concerns about its partisanship or fairness to one political side or the other. Well, it's the Suska guarantee, so who could fault that? Ms. Suska was also the person who granted Australia's left-wing opinion website The Conversation a licence to become a fact-checker in May 2018. That licence has since expired. Now, Sky News Australia asked Ms. Suska a series of questions about whether the public could have faith in her ability to be objective or whether she felt, by appearing on Russia Today, her credibility was hurt. Ms. Suska described the questions as, quote, threatening. Look at your own ownership and ethics before you threaten others working on these crucial issues and charge that they lack independence and a commitment to truth. Your email was meant to be threatening and quite frankly I find its tone abhorrent. I've worked in journalism or media for decades so your accusation that I don't take it seriously is egregious and you should be ashamed of yourself. Ms. Suska said her tweets were not a display of bias, but a call for news organisations to do fact-based journalism to help average citizens govern themselves in a democracy. I think you're starting off from a place of bad faith and you are, quite frankly, missing the point of the tweets specifically and my work generally, she said. We sent the International Fact-Checking Network a series of equally robust questions, but they declined to respond. Not much for transparency, you would see especially when organisations Ms Suska has cleared for duty are consistently censoring news stories and declaring information which is accurate to be false. This is a disgrace. 
Facebook, however, claims the International Fact-Checking Network Group is non-partisan. We're committed to fighting the spread of misinformation on Facebook and Instagram, Facebook says it's on its website. In many countries and regions, we work with independent third-party fact-checking organisations who are certified through the non-partisan International Fact-Checking Network to identify, review and take action on this content. Fact-checking partners do not prioritise claims that are inconsequential or consist of minor inaccuracies. Additionally, the program is not meant to interfere with individual expression, opinions and debate, clearly satirical or humorous content or business disputes. Well, Zuckerberg, we at Sky News have had our opinion content and analysis flagged and censored, so the program isn't really working. Instead of hiding behind biased third-party fact-checkers, perhaps it's time to clean up this corrupt and unfair system you've created. People should be free to express themselves without being censored by an unelected body, accountable to absolutely no one. If you don't, perhaps the laws in this country will have to be rewritten to prevent the abuse of power from continuing.